Hi everyone, welcome to LSSL 5385, Literature for Young Adults in the Fall Semester of 2019. I'm Dr. Lesane. I am your instructor for the course, and I wanted to take uh, a little bit of time in these first two screencasts to go over the syllabus with you. If we were meeting face to face, this is certainly one of the first things we would do in class. And so I'm going to try to emulate that as best I can online. I'm not going to go through everything in this syllabus. That would be kind of ridiculous, but I do want to hit the highlights. I'll start with the first page, which has a lot of information on it. First of all, you see that this is a required course for your Master of Library Science and your School Library Certification. Since your certification is K-12, you have to take both children's and young adult literature. You may end up teaching elementary, that's fine. You may not use your young adult literature um, knowledge, but you just never know. I thought I would probably teach high school and I ended up in middle school and young adult literature came in really handy as I was teaching. Uh, there is the URL for our website. Uh, LS, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> shsu.edu library science. If you need information about the program, you can certainly go there. Please notice that we are now part of a, a new department, library science and technology. And that means we are the library science program as a part of that. Nothing has changed. You still get your MLS. We are still certified. Just wanted to point that out. So I'm your instructor. There's my name, Dr. Lesane. Uh, it the last name looks like Lesesne, but it's pronounced Lesane, rhymes with insane. That will help you remember. Uh, my office is in the teacher education building on the first floor, but we call it the basement, room 139. Uh, there is my office phone, 294-3673, area code 936. If you call me on that number, it automatically forwards to my cell phone. So if it's a question, it's a burning question, and you have to talk to me immediately, use that phone number. We also have a fax if for some reason you need to fax something to us. I have two um, email addresses. I think the first one is easier, Dr. L at shsu.edu. The other one is the one we were assigned years ago, LIS underscore, which is hard to see there, TSL at shsu.edu. In terms of office hours, uh, my in in person office hours are going to be Tuesdays. I'm generally there between eight and four, sometimes out of the office for a meeting. But again, leave me a message. I will be sure to get it. You can arrange to meet with me at another time if that's something that you need to do. The class format simply is online. <laughs> There's nothing else that I can say. It is a combination of screencasts like this to help you understand and then other links that you're going to see here and at Blackboard uh, that give you instructions for doing the various assignments and tell you everything that I hope you'll need to successfully complete the course. The course description, we don't have to read um, here together. You can certainly read that on your own. Let's go on to page two. There are lots of textbooks for the course, but Dr. Perry and I decided several years ago that they were too expensive uh, to ask you to get. And so we decided to create our own online textbook. This is the uh, bit.ly um, URL for it. It should take you directly to the table of contents. The table of contents then each has, has hyperlinks for each of the chapters that will take you to the other materials that you need. And it's totally online, it's free of charge. You can access it easily. Now, in terms of reading, there's a little bit more involvement here. We will all read together 11 young adult novels. We'll read The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi, one of the few young adult novels written by a Native American, winner of a National Book Award as well. We'll read Speak by Laurie Holtz Anderson. You can read the traditional one, which is now 20 years old, or you can read the graphic novel version, which is new this year. We're gonna read Ruth Behar's Lucky Broken Girl was a Bell Prey Award winner from 2017, um, and she's a new voice in the field of literature for and by Hispanics. We'll read Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden, which went all the way to the Supreme Court of uh, Kansas to be ruled that it had to be put back on the shelf for kids. That was in 
uh, well, it was a long time ago, but the the book itself was published in 1982, and it's one of the earliest books that deals with LGBTQ issues. Speaking of LGBTQ issues, we see it here in Donna Gephardt's Lily and Duncan, a book that's a little more contemporary. We're going to read a Roby Harris's It's Perfectly Normal, which is about sex and sexuality. Uh, Walter Dean Myers, Monster, the first ever winner of the Prince Award, a novel that has an incredibly different kind of format, or actually formats to it. You'll read Patrick Ness's The Knife of Never Letting Go, the first in the Chaos Walking trilogy. It is a futuristic science fiction book that is just absolutely riveting, my opinion, of course. We're going to read Isabel Quintero's Gabby, A Girl in Pieces, another book by and about Hispanics. Uh, Margine Sartropi, Persepolis, which is a graphic novel. And finally, we'll all read together Angie, Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give, which won too many awards to even list here. Then you're going to select books by the following authors. One by Kwame Alexander, one by Chris Crutcher, one by A.S. King, that's Amy King, one by Andrew Smith, one by John Green, one by Jason Reynolds. Make sure the books that you are selecting are for young adults, not for children, not for adults. If you have any kind of question, run it past me. I'll be happy to give you the answer. Finally, you're going to read seven other books of your choice. Uh, they need to come from these lists, and please take them from a variety of lists. Note it says here from at least four different lists. So best fiction for young adults, quick picks, Prince and or Prince Honor books, excellence in nonfiction for young adults, great graphic novels for teens, and outstanding books for the college bound. All of those books can be found at ala.org backslash YALSA, Y-A-L-S-A. The lists have to be between 2015 and 2019. And finally, you're going to read one young adult book from the New York Times bestseller list. It'll probably be marked chapter books for older readers from December 2018 through May 2019. The copyright of the book must be between 2018 and 2019. Note that you may read any of these in e-format or you can listen to any of these in audio. Please make a note if that's what you decide to do. Course objectives, you can certainly read these on your own. Uh, these objectives are actually uh, the, um, the standards, part of standard two, which is uh, about literature. The idea objectives, uh, this is what I think is essential. You'll mark what you think is essential, and we see if we kind of agree on that. TK20 accounts. You need to have a TK20 account. You should have it already, but if you don't, you can certainly obtain one between now and the time that your TK20 assignment will be due. GPA requirements. This is relatively new. Uh, you have to maintain a GPA of 3.0 on all graduate courses. That's not new. What is new is candidates who earn a grade of C in any course within the library science program may have his or her graduate status reviewed by the department committee. The committee will recommend an appropriate remediation. If you earn two grades of C in distinct or repeated courses, the, you will be terminated from graduate studies. If you earn one F, you will be terminated from graduate studies. If you're looking for the policy, it's right here. So please keep in mind that your grade should be an A or a B as long as you want to maintain your membership in the graduate program. I'm going to create a second uh, screencast that will kind of follow up on this and talk about the assignments for the course.